Welcome everybody. This is going to be our Algebra 2 quadratic functions lesson number 2, Factoring Hog Review Part 1. And as always, uh, please give this video a like if you find it helpful. And of course, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to be notified when new videos are added. All right, and leave any questions or comments in the comment section below. So we begin with question one. We write each of the fine binomials as a product of an integer with a different binomial. And so here we will be using something called the greatest common factor. So we identify the GCF, the greatest common factor, which is the biggest number that divides evenly into all the terms of the binomial. In this case, our GCF will be five. Okay. And now, so for number one, for letter A actually, we have five times, and now we're gonna figure out what we're multiplying in this case. So it's the GCF times another binomial. To find this, we take each of the terms of the binomial and divide by the GCF. So 10x divided by five will be 2x. So that'll be the first term of the binomial in the parenthesis. And then we take 55 divided by five and we get 11. And that's the second number. And of course we keep the sign in between. So that will be in this case, the factored form of 10x minus 55. For B, the GCF or the greatest common factor for 24x minus 40, well, the biggest number that goes into 24 and 40 appears to be 8. Now, 4 does definitely go in, though, but it's not the greatest one, though. We're always looking at the greatest common factor. So, definitely 8 is our GCF. And now, again, we're going to find the binomial we multiply by 8 to get 24x minus 40. We take the first term, each term, actually, and we divide by the GCF. So, 24x divided by 8 will be 3x. So that goes in the front to match up the first term. And we divide 40 by 8, and we get 5. And that's the second term. That's a minus there, too. Okay, and again, this we if we distribute this, we'll find that we get 24 minus, 24x minus 40. And there's no other common factor that divides e into 3x minus 5. Let's continue with C. The GCF here, the biggest number divides into 6x and 45, will be 3. Okay. Again, we divide 6x by 3. We get 2x, our first term. 45 divided by 3. We get 15, that's our second term. So we get 3x, 3 times 2x minus 15 as the answer for C. And now for D. The GCF, the greatest common factor for 18x minus 9, will be 9. And yes, it can be one of the numbers. Totally can. So we have 9 here. 18x divided by 9 is 2x. 9 divided by 9 is not 0, ladies and gentlemen, it's 1. So we end up getting 9 times 2x minus 1 as the factored form of 18x minus 9. Again, rewrite each of the following binomials as a product of G GCF along with no binomial. This time around, uh, we see in this case, that there are some more variables for some of the terms. But still, for a GCF, or GCF in this case, it will be a number, but also the variable as well. Now, which variable and which x do we use? We have x squared and x. Well, normally if the GCF is if it's a variable, we pick the one with the smaller exponent. So between x squared and x, our GCF will be numerically 2, but also with the x of so 2x. So that's our GCF in this case. Again, your GCF and this your GCF for the variable will be the one with the smaller with the, between the x squared and x, you choose one with the smaller exponent. And again, we take the first term, 2x squared divided by our GCF with 2x, we will get x. Divide 8x by 2x, 
you will get four and a minus in between. And again, the idea is that the binomial you get will cannot be factored any further. That's the idea, pulling out the greatest common factor, the great, not just any factor, the greatest common factor. For B, we find our GCF between 6 and 27 to be 3. And so 6x divided by 3 is 2x. And 27 divided by 3 is equal to 9. So our answer for the second one will be 3 times parenthesis 2x plus 9, close parenthesis. For our third one, C, 30x squared minus 35x. Well, again, we have a number and a variable for our GCF. We see the biggest number that goes into 30 and 35 is definitely going to be 5. And between x squared and x, the small variable is going to be x. And so our GCF is 5x. So we take 30x squared, divide by 5x, and we get, in this case, 6x. We take 35x, divide by 5x, we get 7. With the minus sign between. And that's the answer for choose C. And then finally, for D here, our GCF, the large number goes into 24 and 20 is 4. And now for variable-wise, we have x cubed and x squared. Well, between those two variables, the one with the smaller exponent is going to be x squared. That's our GCF. So we have 4x squared. Now we'll take 24x cubed to the third power, divide by 4x squared. Well, 24 divided by 4 is 6. And x to the third divided by x squared is just x. So we have a 6x as our first term of the, of the binomial. And then we divide 20x squared by 4x squared. The x squared divide out, and we're left with 20 over 4 is 5. And that will be our answer for D, 4x squared times 6x plus 5. Question 3. Write each of the following binomials as a product of a conjugate pair. So we see in this case conjugate pair really means in this that uh, in this case the two numbers in each binomial will be the same, but only differing by the sign in between them. And to find this, we take the square root of each one. So for example, the conjugate pair for x squared, uh, x squared minus 121, well, we take the square root of x squared, and we get x, and that will go into the front for each one. We take the square root of 121, we get 11, and it goes in the back of each one. And we do plus and minus. Now, does it matter we do plus or minus, minus and plus? No, the order doesn't matter. And there we go with our conjugate pair for 3a, x squared minus 121. For 3b is 64 minus x squared. We we'll take the square root of 64. Now, why don't we do the variable first? Because we take the first number that appears from the left to right. And so square root of 64 is 8, and therefore that number goes into the front of each of these. And the square root of x squared, we know it should be x. That goes in the back. And again, because of the fact you have plus and minus, the order does matter, meaning that you have to have the first number come first and the second number come second. So if we put down 8x, x plus 8 times x minus 8, it would not be the same thing. Here, the answer for 3b should be 8 plus x times 8 minus x. For c, we're going to take the square root of 4x squared. Well, the square root of 4x squared really is the same thing as the square root of 4 times the square root of x squared. And the square root of 4 is really 2, and the square root of x squared is x. So therefore, in the front of the, each binomial will be 2x. And the square root of 1 
will be 1. Plus and minus. And there you go for 3C. And then finally, for 3D, take the square root of 25x squared, which is the same thing as the square root of 25 times the square root of x squared. And this gives us 5x. So that's the number in the front. Now, the square root of 1 ninth is the same thing as the square root of 1 over the square root of 9, which is 1 third. And that's the number that goes in the back. So we're going to get, in this case, 5x plus 1 third, 5x minus 1 third. And that is going to be the conjugate pair that matches up to 25x squared minus 1 ninth. So remember, for conjugate pairs, we have to be very careful about the order that they appear, and of course, taking the square root of each one. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this will be the end of our part one of our algebra two quadratic functions lesson number two, factoring homework review. Again, if you found this helpful, uh, please give us a video like. Again, go over them, try them out yourself again, even though you have the answers, go through the motions and go through the steps involved. Take a look and see, because you because the same steps apply to all the types of, types of problems and all. So this is how you get better at doing this factoring thing. All right, everybody. Thanks so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. Take care and be safe.